Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Amen. That was great Amen. worship. Amen. Thank, thank you, Lord. Our worship team, thank you. Now I just want to take a minute before we share from God's Word. Let me say that I want to pray on behalf of all those young Christian ladies mm -hmm. who were kidnapped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 200 some odd young ladies, all those who have placed their faith in Christ. And because of placing their faith in Christ, were taken and kidnapped and I'm sure uh, have been subject to many terrible things. And you know, it's sad when that happens with one person, but to see over 200 young girls uh, be put in that position. Let's, let's pray. Amen. Let's pray on that. Yes. And have that. And Father, God, we know that you reign in the heavens above and in all the earth. We know that your power is mighty beyond description. That your hand is able to reach into every situation. And God, we pray that you would have compassion and grace upon these young ladies. So many, so many Christians have been martyred uh, in this last century and even in this last decade, Lord. It's, it's hard to imagine how many people have died with the name of Christ upon their lips. And Father, I pray that you might have mercy in this circumstance and that you would arrange for these girls to safely come back to their homes and their families and I pray that your grace would be upon the situation that you, uh, God would do a miracle that we will be able soon to rise up right here in this assembly and give thanks to you for what you have done. Show yourself mighty once again and today I pray that you would bless your word to my heart first and to the heart of every one of us who are gathered here today and we'll give you thanks in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. A very familiar passage, I'm sure, for almost every one of you. <clears throat> Exodus, chapter 20. I'm not going to take the time to read down to that verse, but... I'm going to begin here just in fact with one verse. It's found in the 12th verse of chapter 20 of Exodus. <coughs> Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You know, way before anyone else had a top ten list, God had a top ten list of His own. God had a to-do list for you and for me. And these lists of commandments are really blessings. How many you believe that the commandments of God are blessings in disguise? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know it. Amen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Because He's a loving and heavenly Father. And so He only asks us to do those things which are best for us. And in this commandment is a word that we're going to focus on today. And the word is honor. And we've talked about seven words that can change our family. We talked about in the first week, hope. That there's always hope for the family because there's always God. We talked about forgiveness and how when we, we come and reconcile with one another and give grace to one another, even as God has given grace to us, how our family is changed. And last week we talked about the blessing that we want to bless our children. We want to uh, rejoice in them and call down God's favor and grace in their life and let them know how much we love and appreciate them. And I want to tell you, that will change your children in a way nothing else can. Amen. Amen. But I want to speak to you today about honor. Honoring our father and our mother. Now Deuteronomy kind of reads the same thing but adds a little expansion of the blessings 
It says, honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Ephesians 6 repeats the same promise. In fact, you'll find it in many places in the Scripture. Well, you know, when God says something a number of times, He's trying to get a message to you and to me. Amen. God says, honor your father and mother, which is the first command with promise that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. You see, God commands all children to honor their parents. How many of you know what the word all means? <laughs> all means each and every one of us. You see, whether you're 10 or 22 or 54, you never outgrow this command. It is the same for every person, everywhere, every race, every nation, every culture, even our own culture, which sadly does not honor dad or mom. Yet God says, wherever you are and whoever you are, and every one of you should honor your parents. You see, it's an eternal biblical principle. And regardless of how you feel that your parents succeeded in the area of parenting, God says, honor them. He says, honor them. Last week we talked about the importance of of blessing our children, of them receiving that parental approval. But I want to tell you that today we're talking about honoring our parents. And while I know that every one of us that are here today may not be a parent, I can say this, that every one of us hmm. is a child <laughs> to some parent. Yes? yes? Unless there's another way out of that. <laughs> You see, we are all children. The command is to every one of us. And I want to tell you, there, I think there's something, something for everyone in this command to honor your parents, whether your parents are living or whether they are not. God commands all people everywhere to honor their father and mother. Well, what does it mean to honor our parents? The dictionary says honor means to esteem, to hold one in high esteem, to honor and reverence them. The word that we read here translated from the Hebrew into the word honor means this. It means to lay a heavy weight on them. But what does that mean? It means to fix a great value upon them. That's what it means. It is a sincere looking at the things our parents have done right and then honoring them for those things. Honoring your parent is one of God's top to-do lists for you and for me. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Why is honoring your parents so important? You see, when children do not honor their parents, it unravels the moral fabric of the whole. And eventually, the society. Have you seen that? Have you seen a little bit of that in our culture today? Mm -hmm. Honoring your parents is an attitude that you adopt. You know that attitudes are adopted, don't you? <clears throat> you see, many people think that circumstances dictate our attitude. No, circumstances don't dictate our attitude. Our attitude is a choice. That's right. 
And so God says that we should adapt and add it to towards honoring our parents. And then it should be accompanied with action. It forgives and releases our parents for those few things that they may have done wrong and chooses rather to focus on those many things that they did get right when they blessed you all the days of your life. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. 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 It says to them, you are the person that God has sovereignly placed in my life and you have done a great good towards me and you are of great value to me and you are worthy of my love, honor, and respect and all children are commanded to do the same. And God doesn't just command us, but God gives warnings of significant consequences to those who would fail to honor their parents. In Exodus, the next chapter, Exodus 21, 15, it says, He who strikes his father or mother shall surely be put to death. He who curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death. You know what that means? I looked that up, that word curse. Here's what it says. To berate, despise, criticize or speak evil of them, or wish evil, or misfortune upon them. That's what that means. And God says that when we speak such things to our parents, that we ought to be put to death. How many of you are glad that you don't live in the day of the law? There might be a few less of us here today. God gives a warning. Now I know in the course of my life, especially when I was younger, I know that I said some foolish things to my parents. And I imagine that some, a few others, might have done the same. But I want to tell you that God calls us to a different standard. You see, we all come from so very different backgrounds. Sometimes you think, well, how can I honor my mother or father? When God asks you to honor your mother and father, it doesn't mean that if you came from a home that was hurtful and damaging and less than what you thought it ought to be, that you need to ignore or deny the past. God is not asking you to do that when He tells you to honor your parents. Nor is he telling you that you have to go back and plead for their approval. Nor should you be made vulnerable to any hurtful behavior. You see, that's what God is not asking you to do that. But here's what he is asking you. He is asking you to choose to put a great value upon your relationship with them. And God would have you and me to do so. Secondly, he wants you to take the initiative in trying not just to improve your relationship with them in whatever areas you can, but he's asking you to go a step further. And honor them. He's asking you to recognize that they have done some very good things in your life. You know, sometimes our perspective gets clouded by pain. Sometimes some of the things that we may have experienced in our home were less than God honoring. But I'm sure that every parent, in every parent's life, they must have done some things right. And if you are open to see those things, even in your own experience, God will reveal it to you. There's so many hurting families today. So much divorce. So much suffering in the home. But God wants you to honor your parents. 
God wants you to see your parents even as Christ looks upon you with compassion and mercy. And remember and acknowledge the sacrifices they have made for you. And forgive them even as Christ in God in Christ has forgiven you. See, God is not speaking to us today about improving our attitude towards our parents. But God is asking us to pay tribute and to honor our parents. He said, what's a tribute? A tribute is a statement made in acknowledgement, gratitude, or admiration of another. It is words of appreciation and love and respect for someone who deserves to hear it. And that's what God says. God says that it's time we get up and honor our parents. We make a conscious, conscious decision this morning that we will act upon that command to honor them and that we can take time and write a few lines of love and appreciation and pay tribute to those who have borne us into this world and raised us and blessed us and to do so in front of the family. You see, it's important to do that. It's important. Why pay tribute? Why should we pay tribute to our parents? Because God has told you to do so. I think at that point, that's all I need. I think it's probably all most of us need. <coughs> God has told us so. Because He is blessed when we walk in obedience and do what He has told us. It's in God's top ten to-do list. Now, interestingly, all the other commandments do not come with a promise. This one does. God had ten commandments. And when He said, just do it. You like that, you like that statement? <laughs> just do it. Of course, that says there is something a little different in our world than what I'm applying it to here. But God said, just do it. You don't need a reason. Do what I told you to do because it's important for you. It's a benefit to you. But He doesn't state all that. He only says it in one command. And it's this one. We need to do that. We need to make that decision. Because God says that if we do, if we honor our parents, it will be well with you. And you may live long on the earth. God says, He promises, in fact, if you will honor your parents, He will prosper you for doing so. They say, well, what does that mean, prosper me? Well, that might have many different avenues in which God prospers you. But God says, honor them. And I want to tell you that when you offload all that negativity and bitterness and unforgiveness, it will provide you with a healthier and happier life. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. And if it does nothing more than that, it was worth everything and more. Amen. <laughs> But God goes on to say another promise. He says, you will live long for doing so. God will bless you with more years. How many of you are up for that? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I think we get to an age of wonder. Hey, let me cut it short a little bit. This stuff isn't working too good anymore. I'll take longer. Yeah, yeah. We shouldn't dread death if we are a Christian, right. we should rejoice in it. Amen. But I will say God promises that you will live longer. Now I believe that means that you'll live longer in life. God will add to your years. But I want to say this, I think there's also a multiplying blessing found in this promise of God. Because when you choose to honor your parent, 
And you model that before your own children. They see that right and honorable behavior and the likelihood is they will follow suit and one day in your old age they will be a blessing to you and the legacy will go on and their children will do the same and every generation thereafter will be blessed. Amen. When we fail to honor our parents, it devastates them. Some of you may think, well, my parents don't care. They don't really care whether they hear from me or not. I want to tell you that no matter what the state you have with your parents, I will tell you this, that you couldn't be more wrong. It devastates them. A week or so ago, I spoke a little bit about King David and his son Absalom. Absalom was one of King David's sons, and he killed his half-brother because he raped his sister. Now, it was a terrible thing that was done to his sister, but... God didn't put him in charge to take the life of another for doing so. And having done that, he fled. You see, David was angry. David was a king, and he was his father, but he was angry at him, and he was grieved by his actions, and he was probably embarrassed by his behavior. And Absalom fled the presence of his father for three years. And over that time, it appears that Absalom became penitent about his behavior. And he wanted to restore peace with his father. But it didn't happen. In 2 Samuel 13, 39, it says David mourned for his son every day. He mourned for his son every day. Yet in all those three years, he didn't even once reach out to Absalom. He allowed his disappointment and his bitterness and his pride and anger to keep him from reaching out and reconciling with his son. Even David's servants recognized that him and Absalom needed to reconcile. In fact, they even moved and tried to get Absalom to come back to the city of Jerusalem in the hope that David would reach out to them and, and there would be a restoration between father and son. And so Absalom came to Jerusalem and two more years went by. And David didn't even come to see him. After five years of hoping for a reconciliation with his father, Absalom became bitter. And he revolted against his father. And he endeavored to take away the throne. And he plotted and got an army of men behind him, and he attacked his own father. David had to run out of Jerusalem with, with what few men were left to be on his side. And they went outside the city. David said to the men that were fighting and sparing his life and fighting back for the throne. He said, listen, above all things, spare the life of my son. When you go to battle, spare the life of my son. When the battle was won, when David's men went to battle and they fought and they were victorious, the first question he asked of the first person who came back, what about the young man absent? 
See, Absalom was forever on his mind. Here he was five years. He could have seen him any time. He could have been reconciled with his son. But all that pride and disappointment and anger and bitterness was there. And, and he, he didn't marshal over that and reach out. And now his son is gone. And the king was deeply moved. He went up to the chamber over the gate and he wept. And as he went, he said, Oh, my son, Absalom. My son, my son. If only I had died in your place. Oh, Absalom, my son. You see, there's something about a relationship between a father and a mother, and a son and a daughter that no circumstances can change. Some of you may have had an awful relationship with your parents. Maybe through some disagreement, or maybe through some argument, or some issue, you have become estranged. You may think that your parents never think on you. You may think they don't care or they're not willing to reconcile. But I will tell you that is the farthest thing from the truth. That is the farthest thing. Their disappointment, their shame, their embarrassment, their pride, their anger, oh, any number of things could be standing in the way. But just as God has placed in the heart of every child a desire, a longing for their parents' blessing and acceptance, so there is in the heart of every parent a longing to be honored and recognized for the love and sacrifice that they've made on behalf of their son and their daughter. In spite of your disappointments, in spite of your broken promises, in spite of every disagreement and deep and painful injury, you must begin to see that. Maybe. You must begin to see that maybe they endured a similar experience from their own parents. Maybe they just didn't know how to do differently. Or maybe they had problems with alcohol or drugs or other vices that held them bondage and caused them to say things that they otherwise would not have said, said or done. You see, some children forget that parents aren't altogether perfect and that they are heavily flawed, just like you and just like me. But God in Christ has been compassionate and He has been merciful towards us and He has forgiven us for all of our iniquities against Him. And how can we as a believer in Christ not do the same for our own parents even if they have sinned against you? You see, children rarely figure out that parents have expectations and that they experience disappointments and are in need of something in return from you for the love and sacrifices they've made on your behalf. Deep in the heart of every parent is a longing, a hoping for a day when their son or daughter comes to their door and said to them, you really love me. And even though I resented some of the things you told me to do, you were right. I can see that now. I couldn't see it before, but I see it now. You have my best interest in mind. And I'm sorry that I've given you so much grief. You are a good dad. You are a good mom, and I love you for it. How many parents have never heard that from their children? God says it's 
time to honor our parents. He says it's time for you and for me to make a decision, to make a determination that we are going to make a tribute to our parents. And there are many things in life that we must do every day that we may not feel like doing. But we have to do it anyway. How many of you are feeling like going back to work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> but you will go. God forgives us for being so selfish. God forgive us that we are so selfish and immature that we haven't yet recognized our need to honor and pay tribute to our parents. How many times did our parents do things for us that they didn't feel like doing? For our benefit. Raising of kids is an exhausting process. And kids can bring a lot of pain into a parent's life. that often they can't see or recognize. You may feel hurt. You may feel neglected. You may feel understood. You may be angry with your parents, but you must get past those things. God says, honor your parents. Make a note of it. If you do not honor your parents, your own kids will grow up and treat you the same way they have seen you treat them. Mm -hmm. That's true, true. I heard a preacher tell a story. It was about a father whose wife had died. He didn't have much, but he had all that he had. He wanted to give it to his son and his wife. And he asked if maybe they had a small room he would give them everything that he owned, everything he worked for all of his life. He was ready to give it to them, and he just asked, could I just have a small room somewhere in the home? And they said, sure, Dad. Dad moved in, tried to stay out of the way, tried not to be a burden. And as the years went by, the money ran out. And his son's wife was no longer so pleased to have him in the home. She didn't want him around any longer. The money had run out. <clears throat> now he, she thought he would be a, a burden to them. And she, she cajoled her husband into a place but one day he took his father to a state-supported home. And as he was walking up that long sidewalk to that building, halfway in, he had to stop. He was shaking, sat on a bench. The son said, what's, what's the matter, Dad? Why are you crying? I know you don't want to be here. I'm sorry you're crying. He said, son, I'm not weeping for me. I'm weeping, weeping at my own sins. For 40 years ago, I walked my own father up a sidewalk like this. And now I'm re recognizing the results of the evil deeds that I've done against my own father. You see, we're too busy. We have too little time. We break our promises. We deprioritize our parents. They don't seem to matter as much as they once did. Our life becomes so busy and so hectic. We think about moving on in our future with our own kids and we begin to neglect them. And what 
great wickedness is there. But if anyone who does not provide for his own, and especially those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Shame on us that we fail to give our parents our love and appreciation, our time and our care. I'll close with one more story. A woman had a husband who died. But she had four children. All with spouses. She had some money left over, certainly enough to care for her for the rest of her days. And she didn't require very much. She lived in a small home. She wasn't expecting much from her children except for one thing, that every once in a while they might just give her a phone call. She had four children. And many times, six weeks at a time would pass. And no one would call. She began to think, well, why wouldn't they call? Why wouldn't they call me? Maybe they think they're going to have to be held responsible for me. I, don't, I can't think of another reason why they won't call. Don't they care? And when they finally call, all they talk about is how busy they are and how many financial strains they are under and the, and the busyness of their, of their schedule and all the things they have to accomplish. This can't be true among us. This cannot be the way we honor our parents. We must make a tribute to our parents. Even, yes, even if you've been emotionally or sexually abused, you must find a way to honor them. You must, if you focus on the pain, it will only perpetuate. But if you find something good to focus on, I will tell you, it will promote healing and forgiveness in their, your relationship with them. And as hard as it may be to take that step of obedience to God, you will yield a good result. Amen. God's calling you to do something today. He's calling you to do something that will change your family. And that is to make a tribute to your mother or father. To stand before the family and tell them what you think of them. Let them have the appreciation and the love and respect and the esteem that they are deserving of. Be by your head. I want to tell you, friend, it's so easy. It's so easy for us to hear truth. But sometimes that truth goes right to the heart. Sometimes it jumps right into you, and you know that's you, that God's speaking. Sometimes it's hard to see that in ourselves. Yet how many times do we fail to give that honor to people who have loved us and cared for us for such a great many years of our life. God calls us. He calls us to honor them. And we must take up the cause. We must make a determination. We must not turn away. No matter how we feel, we need to honor the Lord. That it may honor our parents as we 
honor the Lord. For God promises a good result and a long life and a joy in your family as those relationships are restored and built up. And there'll be a day when your child will come to your house. And they'll say all that's in their heart and it will be the greatest present that any